Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph, and this week I'm featuring the 68 Pontiac GTO kit that recently came out from AMT. And I'm going to go over a couple of things with it and some of the pluses and minuses of this kit because there seems to be a lot of uh, animosity towards the kit, and for possibly good reason. I'm not going to uh, argue that part of it, but I do see some of the points there, but we'll get into that for a minute. But first, I just want to say thank you to Hobby Nut Models, Mark, they're sponsoring the channel, and they did send me this kit as a promotional sample, and so I can go over it with you and everything, and I was really interested in this kit to begin with, and uh, but I heard a lot of people, you know, voicing that uh, they're a little upset that it's a Craftsman Plus curbside, and some people don't know, and it's all over the box. Craftsman Plus, if you know the vintage kits, um, were basically unassembled promos, and really had a whole, not a whole lot of detail, which is also what curbside means. There's no engine in it. But this thing, it's got its pluses and minuses. And I know the biggest debate is basically for what some of these kits cost today, um, it should come with an engine. Well, yeah, I, I get that. I really do. Um, but getting into this particular kit, this is a really nice kit, really, and they're not hiding it. It flat out says curbside style. I know some people may not know what that means. It also promotional, they kind of mention it there. But they do give you some options here, two wheel style options. It actually has side view mirrors. And you know, it's, it's pretty well detailed for what you get. Uh, here's a shot of the side and then this side here. It has a little bit of the vintage vibe to it as far as how it looks. But it is all new tooling and it kind of says it on there and you can see in the bottom here how simplified it is just by looking at the kit there's not a whole lot of detail to it but it has some very nice decals in it too but uh, we'll open this up but for comparison here's the um original here this is the mpc 68 gto now i know they took some of the styling cues and everything from this but these two kits they're literally separate kits that's all new tooling this is from 1968 and it's never been re-released. And I really like this kit, but this one has a lot of custom parts in it. There's a lot of stuff to it. And, um, you know, you can see a lot of stuff here. And I really like this kit and, I, and to be honest, I don't really know why I haven't built this one. I know I really wanted the convertible, but I didn't get the convertible or convertible till later. Um, but I got this kit and we'll get more into that too. But. First, when it comes to Craftsman series, um, let me say this. How many of you remember this kit? Now, this is a very desirable kit, and um, but it's the same thing. It's curbside style. It's basically an unassembled promo. It doesn't say that on this particular box, but this is a 63 Falcon, and I really like this car. Just one I just thought the styling and everything was great. But the hood doesn't even open. It's kind of a snap kit, but it doesn't say snap kits. There's no glue required. But, you know, it's a 125th scale. But it's 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 funny because it's in this box. It barely fits in there. It's virtually assembled, but it's not assembled. And getting into another one here, here's another original Craftsman Series kit. This one actually says Craftsman Series 64 Valiant Signet. I know you Mopar guys are probably going nuts here. And... Um, you know, it's in here too, and it, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a good kit. But one of the things that cracks me up here is it says Craftsman Series, and it just talks about the ideal indoor hobby and about the hobby. But this side right here, customizing tips for the Valiant Craftsman. To build this speed version of this Valiant, open the hood and install a Chrysler engine from a &T's Hot Rod Shop. Radius the rear wheels and install drag slips and racing mag wheels. When it's finished, your Valiant will look like a factory experimental. So they're saying here, this is basically a very basic kit. And if you want to do stuff to it, cut the hood open, um, put an engine in it, cut the wheel openings. You don't see that nowadays. It's kind of not saying that, but this one has some of that stuff. Now, here's where the argument I can kind of see. When this came out, I understand that was the retail price, a dollar. So in 64, this was a dollar, half the price of this kit in 1968, this was two bucks. That's what I understand. Which is kind of cheap because some of the AMT kits are also $2.50 in the uh, mid 60s. 
like some of the T-Birds, the 63, 64 T-Birds, I understand they were $2.50. This was two bucks. So I can understand this being twice as much as this, but you don't have a whole lot of options. This is kind of a curbside, you know, unassembled promo, and this has a bunch of custom parts. So I get that as well. But getting into this, also I should mention, yes, I know about the Ravel kit. Matter of fact, I have it. Um, don't really have any issues with that. Some of you don't like the fact that it's, uh, it's 124 scale. This one's 125th scale. My only real issue with that one is it's a pro street, uh, street machine, really. Um, not really pro street, but out of the box, it can't be built stock. Now I did buy the monogram 69 GTO judge, which you can take those parts and combine it with the 68 kit. And you can make a mostly stock 68 GTO from that kit. My only real complaint there is the interiors are completely different. And the 68 from Monogram has always had the 69 interior. It's never had the 68 interior. The dash is completely different. The seat patterns are different. This kit has all the 68 parts as far as the interior and stuff goes. So getting farther into it, here is that... Uh, really nice decal sheet right here uh, with the pinstripes in multiple colors black and white and a lot of the emblems there so a lot of really good stuff there real simple instructions of course it's got the high to a headlight grill the mirrors i mentioned two sets of stock wheels both are stock magnum 500s and then the rallies i forget what they call these here super stock two or something like that um but i really like these wheels I just call them the rallies, but you know, the 68 bumper and grill, here's the body, of course, the 68 vent windows. Now the nose is completely separate, which makes me think maybe they can turn this into a 69, but it's got the vent windows and stuff on it. No vinyl top. It looks pretty nice. Some of the emblems are really crisp and stick out pretty far um, on here. So I kind of wonder how those will work as far as being foiled versus the decals. But it's, it's pretty nice, and it's got um, the radio sport details, but really nothing on the uh, cow side there. So I find that kind of odd that that's blank, but there's some really nice detail here. But the hood is open. On the old Craftsman series, you have to cut the hood off. Um, this one, it's open, so half the work's already done for you. Of course, the glass right here and the marker lights here, the turn signal marker lights that go on the front. Here's the interior tub, which has the door panels as part of it, but the front seats come out, manual tranny and console, wheel back, so not much there. Here's the whole front clip, the 68 dash, the 68 seats. Here's the filler insert. If you don't put an engine in, you can put that in. The hood, steering wheel, then we got these for the axle, and then you got the plastic pin, so there's no axle steel axle going all the way through um, the engine or lack of engine but if you put an engine in there you don't have that um, what i think is kind of funny here's the hood tack and they give you these two little holes here to help you locate um, the hood tack and put it in there but there's no under hood detail um, so i kind of find that a little bit disappointing but that's okay as i am kind of planning on building this one curbside just to do it just because um, to show that it can be done. And then it's got the rear suspension trailing arms right here, which are very basic, but they fall in line with like the originals here. Your very basic chassis, just like the original cars of that time. Um, but the axle that goes through molding and exhaust and everything. So it's a very simple, but kind of based similar to that. And then of course, some red line tires and the steel axle. So all of that's pretty nice. So in comparison, when we get to uh, this one, I'll show you some of the differences here. Let's move this box a little farther out of the way. But um, this I've had for about 10 years. Kind of comes with a funny story. But maybe I'll get into that another time. But here's the instructions. Here's the original decal sheet. So there are no um, GTO markings or anything on here. It's just all the custom stuff. Which is pretty cool, but that's what's in here. And the instructions. Here's its original body. 
what you can see it's got some underhood like it's a fiberglass underhood really no detail under here as well uh, got their fancy hood pins to keep the hood in there in place which is kind of funny because if you build this you can prop these in at an angle and it'll catch um, the firewall or something and a lot of times it'll stay in upright or it'll go straight down you can put it down but this front piece is molded in so you, you know compared to that one this front is molded in and there's the back and here's the simple chassis but you know it's got the axle and the uh, exhaust they're kind of molded together but they're not part of the chassis but you can see a lot of the same design where they kept a lot of the architecture there but made it even simpler with this kit. Body wise, they're pretty much the same as far as dimensionally and how they're shaped. So I find that interesting. This hood doesn't seem to quite fit. It's just a tad wider. So, you know, I think you take the original and maybe sand it down to fit this one if you needed to. Don't really see a point to doing that. Now let's get the chassis out of here and of course the tub pretty much you know similar in design manual tranny console upholstery it all pretty much matches and then the inside here with the locating pins but not much else there so I'll put that stuff off to the side and some of the cool stuff on this one this one has the clear hood that's pretty cool then the glass, which is kind of broken, but not. You can see it's uh, split away, but still usable. There's uh, stock taillights, custom taillights, and then uh, the custom headlights. But all of that's still in here. Now this one has most of its custom parts as far as this kit goes. Got our drag slicks, and then three axles, a couple of the screws. And this thing wasn't built, but it wasn't quite mint. Here's all the custom parts, the rear bumper, the front spoiler, the inserts for the custom grill, um, front tires in plastic. The other half of the front tires, these are halves, so you gotta glue them together. The racing seats, the roll bar, um, wheel backs, and then some of the wheel fronts here. Uh, I believe those are the back wheels. So all kinds of stuff here. This is missing a few of the little pieces for the uh, front suspension for the race version. You know, the solid axle conversion on this, but the blower. So it's missing just a couple of those parts, but I never really cared. Um, this was one that I bought to build stock. So here's all the stock parts. There's the molded in rear axle with the exhaust, stock seats the stock rally wheels, their basic engine, steering wheel. So a lot of the stuff here, shifter, inside rear view mirror. There are no outside rear view mirrors on this thing. Uh, the heads with a whole lot of flash. You see all that flash right there, but uh, that's okay. And the 68 dash, which looks really good. <clears throat> and then, you know, the intake had chrome on it. I stripped the chrome off the intake because it's going to get painted body color um, or body color, engine color, not body color. But there's all those parts. Didn't have the original tires. So I got these for model Haas. And this is the original front bumper and grill, which are have been re-chromed by Chrome Tech Bob. Like I said, it's been a while. So those are kind of wrapped, but they look exactly like these, um, but may not quite fit this body. I kind of doubt it, uh, but I'm not going to unwrap them just for that. But, you know, quite a bit of difference between the two kits. So, you know, the, they kind of have a lot of the same vibe and feel, but not really, you know, they're related, but not related. It's kind of like distant cousins. So, a um, lot of cool stuff in here. But, yeah, the two really don't, um, it's kind of hard to compare the two, really. You know, when you got something that's 50 years old. And then you got this brand new tool. I like it. The proportions, I think, look pretty good. Um, should go together really well. Like how it's there's no hole for a mirror on this one, but it's got 
just on the one side. Driver's side is really common. Having a passenger side mirror is kind of rare. But it does have two mirrors. And the way they're made, now it's got two driver's side mirrors. Because the pin goes the same direction. So you got a spare mirror, which is great. I'll use it on something else because a lot of these don't have it. Here's the shifter. So a lot of cool stuff. My plans with this one, though, I think I'm not going to bother adding an engine to it. But I do want to put a vinyl top on this one. So that's the plan with this one is to build it as a you know, more standard 68 GTO, but put a vinyl top on it. Vinyl tops were pretty popular in the time frame. But put a vinyl top on it and kind of put it all together and enjoy it for what it was for. But it's kind of a gateway car. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, you know, round two has been doing a lot of this stuff lately, but round two has really been bringing back a lot of stuff that uh, everybody's been asking for or wanting. And I applaud them for that. And, you know, I like this kit. Um, maybe they'll come out with another version that has uh, more detail on the underside of the hood, adding an engine like a uh, um, uh, deluxe kit, maybe kind of like what they did with the Nova, the 63 Nova, uh, that wagon kit. Came out with that. Recently announced the 71 Demon kit. Uh, that's pretty exciting. And then uh, the all new Tool 68 Coronet uh, RT convertible. And then a hard top's coming. So, I mean, you know, for a, a company that's been around a long time, although RC, no, well, RC2 had them before. It's round two. I'm working on researching the ownership history. But I know when RC2 owned uh, AMT, there was a lot of goofy kits and a lot of things going on at that time. And unfortunately, you guys that haven't been in the hobby very long and you find some of those kits, I, I feel bad for, you know, when you open them up and you find um, some of the wrong parts and some of the stuff that was going on at that time and kits that were just uh, poorly advertised. For example, this is one right here. I know this is a somewhat desirable kit now, but this is 20 years old. This is from, uh, when did they issue this? 2004, so it's 20 years old. This was when RC2 owned them, and I'm not bagging RC2, I'm, I'm not, you know, because it's nice that these kits kept coming out and they're out there, but a couple of things with this. This box art and the way it's made, you see chrome headlights here. You see these wheels. You see these stripes on the box. Okay, what's in the box? You don't get decals at all. You get license plates, okay. You get these wheels, not the ones on the box. You get the stock ones, don't really mention that. Here's the grill. It has separate lenses for the headlights. And um, there's some other stuff in here um, that go along. And this one's actually a pretty decent one, but they sometimes have mismatched parts and really confusing box art. So you see this and you think, oh man, I love this car. I love it with these wheels. You buy it and you find out it doesn't have the stripes. It doesn't have these wheels. Unfortunately, in that time frame when RC2 owned them, a lot of that happened. So with round two owning them, and um, they're pretty passionate, it seems, and investing and in coming out with some of these tools that represent some of the vintage tools that people have been wanting back. I think it's great. And I hope this sells well as it would be a gateway into more subjects like this. Same thing with that. They invest the time and the effort to make some of these kits and come out with them um, when they could use the resources to come out with kits that uh, haven't existed, period. So, I mean, there's a big debate there, but that's uh, that can go on and on and on. But anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. But first, uh, a big shout out. Thank you to Hobby Nut Models for uh, sampling this and you know um, sponsoring the channel. And I will eventually build this and it won't be right away. I've got other projects going on and my modeling time has been very limited. So I apologize for that. But, you know, I'm trying to keep content going for you guys. But uh, thank you for tuning in and subscribing. And I'd really like to hear all your comments on this and what do you what do you think about that? I know, you know, like I mentioned, uh, not too many people are happy that it's not a complete kit, but it's it's a nice kit. And I've seen some built ups online that are just coming out pretty nice as a simple kit. And for 
less experienced modelers, I think that is great. Um, I, one time I was pretty inexperienced myself and we all had to start from nothing. But anyway, uh, that's enough of that. But you guys, you know, you know, like I said, I'd love to hear your comments and thank you for tuning in, subscribing and you guys, you have a wonderful Saturday and I will see you next weekend.